Right, in the previous video we learned about um, adding a class and maybe adding a subclass and we added a property and we saw that a property needs to have a domain and a range and we saw how to actually assign that. If you remember here, we added a property here, we added a property called plays instrument and we gave it a domain of class musician and range of class musical instrument and we said that whenever we use that in a triple if we want to use that property in a triple then its domain must be i.e. the subject uh, of of this triple needs to be of type or a musician and the uh, object or the value of that property needs to be a musical instrument now let's say uh, the address book that's provided by the author which is this address book here as we can see his first name last name postal code some other information let's say or the author is assuming that he's going to add another triple to this address book if you look here it's exactly the same one but with another uh, uh, triple now with another because it's the same sort of the same subject he's adding another property and another value value uh, property plays instrument the one that we uh, um, uh, added before this one here and then he's giving it a value of type vacuum cleaner as you can see now uh, usually when whenever we think about classes in the object oriented way if we say members of for example a class well, let's say class musician have a play instrument property well what that means is uh, whenever we instantiate whenever we um, um, uh, create a new instance of um, of that class then they need to have a value for the play instrument property yes they need to have a value for that in RDFS an owl in this sort of way, uh, idea of ontology design and RDFS an owl the idea, the idea is the other way around. Let's have a look at the last two triples of the example uh, 044 to make it clearer. So the last two triples, these two ones here, this one and this one, whenever when we added the play inst plays instrument property. Um, what happens now is that if something has a play instrument value, yes, or pl pl uh, a play instrument property then it's m it's a member of class musician yes yeah? so if, if uh, that's not a value that's a property so if anything has a play instrument plays instrument property that means it is a member of class musician so it's actually opposite way that opposite to the object oriented object oriented whenever we have a class member of that class needs to have that property automatically whereas here if anything has that property that automatically means it is actually a member of class musician the class that is actually in the domain of the property hope that makes sense and then likewise if um, the class has that or, or the value of that plays instrument uh, a property the value of that property is a member of class musical instrument as we he had uh, assigned it by the range so whenever something has or whenever an, a subject has this property then automatically it will be understood it will be inferred that that subject is a member of class musician yes and then the value of that property the plays instrument property the value of that property will automatically be inferred to be as a member or as an instance of class musical instrument because of the domain and range so the idea here is opposite to in object oriented I hope that makes sense now once we've added the, the, the new triple uh, as we see here in example f uh, 45 so let's have an example here we added this one the author is saying he is adding this one the plays instrument and then vacuum cleaner so when if we find this then automatically it will be understood that this individual here is a, 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 an instance or as a member of class musician and this vacuum cleaner, vacuum cleaner here the value of this property 
is again a member of or an, or an instance of class uh, musical instrument. I hope that makes sense. This will be automatically inferred. This will be automatically sort of understood or deducted. Uh, any RDFS aware RDFS aware software or Sparkle processor knows that Richard Mott, for example, which is this individual here, you know, the one we describe him with first name and last name and the rest of the information, it will automatically know that this name is now a member of class musician and it will automatically know again that vacuum cleaner is a member of class musical instrument although we did not specifically we did not we did, we did not explicitly say that in our data this is the power of this stuff and as you can see here this is why I'm putting in in, in bold here in thick here just saying that using the semantic web standards by adding one property to the metadata about the existing resource ie for example this resource here that resource becomes a member of a class that it wasn't a member of before automatically just by adding one property rather than having to uh, create a new instance of that class and instantiate the values as we do in object oriented we just add one property and it will be automatically inferred that that uh, a resource becomes automatically a member of a certain class as we saw here for Richard Mott for the musician because he uh, because he is now uh, 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 as we see in the in the example file here the subject of this property is automatically a member of class musician and the object of the property is automatically or, or becomes automatically a sub or a member of class musical instrument I hope this makes sense it will be automatically inferred that these are subclasses or members of the certain classes everyone according to the domain or range as I explained before keep watching the next video is going to be interesting as well thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time